In yesterday's video, we discussed that David Moyes is safe in his job as West Ham manager, irrespective of what division we are in next season. To paraphrase, just so in case you missed yesterday's video, you don't have to go back and watch it. It was leaked on three separate occasions to various trusted news outlets by, um, you know, people, trusted sources at West Ham, let's put it that way, that it doesn't matter. Even if West Ham get relegated, David Moyes keeps his job. Massive interactions on yesterday's video. Thank you very much for that. I pretty much agreed wholeheartedly with everything that everybody wrote on there. I've, I've cherry-picked a few of your comments, which we'll go through later. Anyway, yesterday I sort of discussed the, the news, if you like. Today I want to discuss some more opinions on it and, and really sort of uh, now I've collated my thoughts on it. David Moyes has a reputation as being somebody that will save your club from relegation. So if you have a Premier League club and your club is hurtling towards the trapdoor, is about to get relegated, David Moyes has a reputation as the man to come in, red there, he'll come in and he'll rescue you. Now, I could argue the finer points of that, but I'm not going to. That's not really what I want to argue. I spend too much time doing that. What I want to argue with, really, is that he is the man to get us promoted, because I see no evidence for that. In terms of his reputation for keeping a club in the Premier League, I get it. I get it. He was hired by Everton when they were in trouble. He rescued them. He kept them up. They, uh, they coined, they had a good moniker. They coined a phrase, the dogs of war. He got them scrapping. That, that's what he does, by the way. This is what David Moyes does. Collectively, he gets a team playing better than the sum of their parts. Generally, a ramshackle team that's of journeymen that's been, that's been hurriedly put together, he can get the best out of them. He, he can... Tr he, let me put it this way. There's no way of saying it without it sounding mildly offensive. I don't mean to offend anyone. But he can get a less than talented team of players playing cohesively in a good unit. That, that, that's what he does. He did that at Preston, OK? And he did it at Everton. And then basically he built Everton up. He then got into trouble a season. I think he had one good... His next season was good with Everton. Or had a couple of good seasons with Everton. Then he got him into trouble again. And he kept him up. So that, that's two relegation scraps where he's kept Everton up. He then comes into West Ham, keeps us up twice. I don't think it's quite as clear cut as that because I don't think we were terrible. We had also spent big money. So I could spend time arguing that actually, you know, maybe it wasn't the biggest rescue act in the world. But let, let's, get, let's, let's be generous. Let's give him those. So let's give him two rescue attempts, um, successful rescue attempts, Everton, two at West Ham. That's, that's four. And let's, let's be really generous. Let's forget the time he took Sunderland down and got them relegated. OK, so if we even just accept he has a reputation for keeping teams in the Premier League, that's absolutely fine. There is no evidence at all that he can get us promoted from the championship. None. He's never done it. He's never got a team promoted from the championship into the Premier League. So I understand the argument when some people say, who better than David Moyes to keep West Ham up? OK, I get the argument. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think almost anyone could do a better job at this moment in time. I think you could put Kevin Nolan into the job and he'd do a better job than David Moyes at this moment in time. I suspect, I suspect all is not well. And, and that's why you end up with situations like the players having team meetings to try and try and galvanise one another anyway. That aside, that aside, I can understand the logic between someone saying David Moyes is the man to keep us up, even if I don't agree with him. I just don't see any logic in he is the man to get us promoted. None at all. There's actually a little list. If you Google it, if you Google most successful championship managers, most successful EFL managers, there's a website there. Someone's collated it all. Someone's put all this stuff together. And I'm not suggesting, let me just make this clear, because every time I do this, some people will say, I can't believe you want Neil Warnock. I'm not saying that. My, I only make the point that if you wanted to hire a specialist in the English Football League, they're listed. You can see them. Neil Warnock's done, done loads. Loads of promotions for Neil Warnock. Um, there's lo there's, honestly, there's loads of people. Dave Jones in there. Mick McCarthy was in there. Harry Redknapp, three promotions. Um, I, I was a little bit surprised. At that. There's, there's lots of them in there. And I think when I looked, I was looking at the top 40, the top 40 managers. David Moyes doesn't feature amongst them. You can find no evidence to suggest that he is the man that will take West Ham up. That's my first point on that, really. So I'm really surprised that West Ham would guarantee him that. What are they seeing? Because it, there's no evidence, which means it can only be hope. 
We, so it can only be hoped that, even when Allardyce came in, when Allardyce came in, at least he'd done it before with Bolton. We brought Allardyce in, you could say, okay, he was a specialist. It works. It was a bit squeaky bum. I think he should have got us promoted um, in the top two. Allardyce, he didn't. Let's be fair, I don't think we were brilliant in that final either in the playoffs, but he got the job done. Fair, fair enough. Let's, let's, I don't want to be too mean-spirited. There's enough bad things to say about Sam Allardyce. He got us promoted. But I understand. I understood his appointment. I mean, it worked, didn't it? There's not, there was some evidence. That's the point. There's no evidence with David Moyes at all. I also think the reasoning for keeping him in, the cha in that championship is not sound at all. What does David Moyes do? Bearing in mind what I said, David Moyes can galvanise the team. The reason he was good at Everton to start with was he basically had them defending. When he really struggled at Man United, it was when he, were, when he had more expansive, more attacking players. He struggles, right? When he, when he finds himself now at West Ham, where he's got to suddenly build a team around more expansive players, put Paqueta in there, you know, use Ben Rama more efficiently, basically get more creative players, he struggles because that's not what he does. I think you'll find he probably got Preston promoted. I think he got Preston promoted from League One to the Championship, if memory serves me correctly. Preston didn't have the money. Preston didn't spend their way into the championship and do and do well. And they did all right. I think Preston got into the playoffs in the championship, to be fair to Moyes. But he didn't do it by playing swashbuckling attacking football. Preston sat back and defended, just like Everton sat back and defended. Just like West Ham sit back and defend. That's why they weren't having him at Man United. They weren't having all that sit back and defending. So if West Ham did go back into the championship, I'll, I'm pretty sure that his tactics would not work there. I think it's pretty much what a lot of teams do. The teams, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, the teams that I seem to really like, think get promoted, win constantly, are on the front foot, score lots of goals. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you can find examples where that's not the case, but by and large, fortune favours the brave in the championship. David Moyes wouldn't do that. We would still be playing this football in the championship. So I see, I, it's not just that he doesn't have a promotion to the Premier League, as evidence, his football, these tactics, they don't suit it either. Now, I'm not saying they suit nobody, but if West Ham went down to the championship, we'd be the most expensive team down there. We could afford to have the best team in the championship. We could, we could have the best flair players. We could have the best striker. We, basically, we could have the personnel there, which would allow us to, to shoot our way and score our way out of that division. David Moyes wouldn't do it. He would sit back and he would sit tight. It would be a horrendous decision. And also, the other thing I just want to make out, and the last point, and uh, is something I've said before. We drop down to the championship. That stadium becomes, becomes a, a massive hindrance because there's just no way we would fill it. I, I always suspected it would be half full. If you want to guarantee it's even less than half full, then you keep David Moyes as manager because I've got to say, there'll be a lot of people not turning up, not turning up for that. Let me just, um, I want to read through a couple of comments here. Uh, got it up there. Right, first one, um, GWHUFC. Thanks for writing in, mate. He said, if we get relegated and my stays, I just can't renew my season ticket. Please go now. This, this is quite key here. I, I think this will happen an awful lot. It's another thing that the board aren't factoring in. You can drop down to the championship and I'll get on to somebody else that's asked me to talk about that again. You can, I'd rather we didn't, but you better, if you what you want to do is pack that place out with fans, and they won't pack it out. A lot of the people, there'll be a lot of Johnny Come Latelys who only got their ticket because West Ham are in the Premier League that didn't go to Upton Park, they, they won't renew, they'll go. Let's be perfectly blunt here, we all know that there are fans in that stadium who aren't West Ham fans. They, they will go, they're, they're only there for Premier League football. Uh, the, the, what you're going to need to attract more people in there is attractive football. He's not going to provide it. He really isn't. If things are expensive. Times are hard, OK? They really are. You know, money's tight at the moment. And, um, and that, that's a big ask. That is a big ask to ask someone to go and spend all the money on trains and season tickets and the rest of it to go and watch someone that's going to try and, let's be fair, defend his way out of the championship. Um, Ionix, uh, Ionix one. Thank you for sending this in, mate. And and I'm sort of glad it sort of feeds into what I was saying. He said, "I'm not quite confident that all the fans know the full repercussions of relegation in this current Premier League, Gonzo." 
they are possibly too young to remember. Maybe Hammer's Chat video to outline what happened to us 20 years ago and what would be far worse now. Uh, we are no longer at Upton Park. I think what Ionix is, is referring to there is, and you have to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments here, I think, I mean, I've seen a lot of relegations. We've all seen, a lot of us seen a lot of relegations. i never traditionally been afraid of relegation at all uh, because, you know, you know what? It was, we were sort of used to it. We were a yo-yo team. But what we hadn't done is we hadn't mortgaged our club on the, on the premise of being in the Premier League. It was OK. We could handle it if we got relegated. My, my words, I mean, you know, we won the FA Cup we were, when we were in the, um, well, it was called uh, it was called Division 2 then, but what you'd call the Championship now. It didn't hold much fear for us. Uh, now we don't own our own ground. And as, I, as I've said on numerous occasions, that stadium will, that stadium will be a, a brilliant day out for a lot of those clubs. Uh, a lot of those clubs that are in the Championship, it, you know, they don't have to encounter fans on the street. They, they, the coach goes straight in through guarded, locked gates. Uh, the dressing rooms are well, the dressing rooms are built for Usain Bolt. They're beautiful. It, it's cavernous in there. The food's great. It's like a hotel. Going into that place is like a hotel. It's not intimidating. The fans are miles from the pitch. We can't intimidate the opposition team, and we certainly can't influence the referee. Now, whenever I say that, People always, will, 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 not people, there will always be someone that comes on and say, oh, come on, come on, Gonzo. Upton Park wasn't always noisy all the time. I'm not for, I'm not for a moment saying it was. But, but it wasn't a nice place to go for opposition teams. It just wasn't. It's, a, it's as simple as that. Whether the crowd were in full voice or whether they weren't. This, Upton Park, we still had home advantage. I'm not sure we do in the championship with this ground. I think what Ionix is referring to is the team that went down um, when... Well, it's a team that was too good to go down. That's what, that's what you're talking about, isn't it, mate? You know, with with, um, with Joe Cole in there and, and, and all of that when Glenn Roder... Um, well, Glenn Roder had, had a disastrous start, an absolutely disastrous start. Um, and then, well, he, he very sadly, obviously sadly passed away now. He actually got a, um, a brain tumour, um, so he had to retire uh, from his role. Um, Trevor Brookin took over in the last few games. Unfortunately, we went down. We went down with 41 points or something like that, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, but everyone thought we were too good to go down. We weren't. We absolutely weren't. Today, it would be far worse, like Ionic said. Uh, this is from Major. Major says, if we're in the championship, teams are going to be defensive against us. He's absolutely right. And Moyes doesn't know what to do against defensive teams. He doesn't have the ability to attack, so we'll have a defensive manager when we should be the most attacking team in the league. He must go whatever happens this season. I, I totally agree with, with, what, with Major's ob tactical observations uh, there. He must go whatever happens this season. I think he means at the end of the season. I think Major knows he's here for the remainder of this season. I would agree with that. I, I think even if he kept us up by the seat of our pants, it would be difficult given the spend given the spend, to suggest that he's had a good season. I, I really do. Um, yeah, I, and, and, I, and I think I think that would be tricky. I mean, we would be, this sort of feeds back into what I was saying about the stadium and everything else, we would be a, a big scalp, wouldn't we? That, I mean, it would be, you know, whatever, Tottenham laugh at us saying, oh, you know, us playing Tottenham's Air Cup final. Ah, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's one of the things I look through on the fixtures. Uh, you know, I guess they've got a case in that sense. Um we would be the cup final for a lot of teams down in that division. No mistake about it. Uh, Steve DeWeave said, uh, now Moyes knows he's got the board's full backing. It will allow him to concentrate more on the job in hand, which is the important matter of staying in the Premier League. It should help to remove distraction it causes when everyone, especially fans, is speculating who the next manager is going to be. Surely it's a good thing. OK, this, this, is, this is a different opinion here, and that's why I put it in next. I think it's, it's important, you know, to have... And it's not like... It's not like I've just cherry-picked ones that agree with me. Most of them, most of the opinions were in the agreement that it was a bad thing that David Moyes had been guaranteed his job. Um, but I do, I, I do appreciate you, you having the opposite opinion, Steve. Uh, he said, basically saying the board are just backing Moyes by, by, by saying he's, he's here. He's, we've backed him, irrespective of what division we're in. It, it helps remove the distraction. I'm, OK, I'm not... I get your logic... I absolutely get your logic, Steve. I really do. I just, 
I just don't think the conclusion is is correct. I don't think it will remove distraction. I, th I think the next time we lose a league game, I think the distraction is still there. I, I really do. If we lose to Southampton, the fact that they've backed him, I don't think that lessens the distraction. I I I don't think it lessens the pressure on Moyes. I think it's I think it's, it's even more it's even more ramped up because then will be a case of if. I mean, if we lose Southampton, we're below Southampton. You could, it's quite possible, be bottom, very, very bottom of the league. Um, I think then back in. I think they have backed him. That's the other thing. They really have. They've backed him more than more than anyone could expect. I really do. As I said, it's old Teflon Dave. They they really have backed him. I don't think they need to go the extra mile by saying, oh, you know, we will. Basically, there's one thing saying we back you now and, and we, we back you and you're our guy. It's another thing to say pretty much. Oh, not only do we back you now, we back you. Forevermore, not quite that forever, but you know what I mean. But for now and for the future, as, as I get what you're saying, I get what you're saying. I'm just not sure it's worked like that, really. Um, and there you go. Um, some some lovely comments from you all, from Steve the Weave, uh, from Major, from Ionix, and from G W H U F C, which I'm assuming is not his actual full name. Uh, thank you for joining in. And uh, I mean, I've, I've got to thank you all. I read through so many of those comments yesterday, and and there were some really really good. Good points on there as well. Um, there was a lot more to discuss as well, particularly with regard to uh, the players' contracts. Players going down to 50%. I haven't really fully thought, thought through the dynamic of that. I, I, I suspect they won't be thrilled at that, by the way. But there's just so much with this with this Moyes stuff um, going on. Um, and there's a couple of people on there saying, you know, speak about <laughs> speak about something more positive. I mean, what we did, we, you know, we spent three days covering the Lana Cup. Win. I mean, you know, we did, we did, all, you know, all the player ratings. All for, you know, most of them are really, really generous on that. But you know, this is a story. It's, it's a relevant West Ham story at the moment. And yeah, hey, look, it's not us, not us that leaked the news about it. That's that's for sure. So you know, we're going to talk about this. And I, and I have to say, I, I was, I was, I think there's a difference between shocked and surprised, isn't there? I wasn't surprised when the news came out, but I was shocked. It's still shocking to hear it, isn't it? that even if West Ham get relegated, David Moyes keeps his job. And I do, I just spent my time scratching around thinking, why? Why? That, that's the question, why? Why would they do that? And then when you look and you and you try and put yourself in their position, oh, maybe they think he's the best man for the championship, but why? You know, and then you start questioning that. Well, there's no reasoning for that. And once you do take emotion out of it, and that's what I've tried to do, and be as cerebral as I can, and actually look, statistically, why would they choose him for the championship? There's, there's no, there's nothing. There's, there's nothing there. There's, there's no solid evidence to suggest that he's the right man for the job. In fact, there are numerous, there are so many people, both domestically and across the continent, who have, it's not just promotion to the Premier League, might have had promotions, might have taken the team um, from the second tier in Germany into the Bundesliga or, or something like that. There's so many of these people around who you could argue are qualified for the job, just David Moyes isn't one of them. 